coach and student athletes. I think, uh, again, wow, what a game. Uh, NCAA tournament, you know, and that's I think, what it's all about. We had, you know, goals, uh, top class goals, top class saves, uh, a real battle. Uh, I think that's what the tournament is all about. Um, Credit to, uh, to Michigan State, I think a fantastic team, well coached, uh, very difficult to play against. Um, and again, I'm sure that disappointed the season ended, but again, a real classy operation, fantastic hosts. Um, and again, commiserations for those guys uh, that the season end, but again, a, a fantastic effort. What a fight, you know, again, and see a tournament. Uh, were you guys kind of surprised that they scored eight minutes in? Was that a little shock to you? Or um, yeah, I think we started the game well. Um, I think against a run of play, but again, that shows there, you know, they, they, they stick to their style of play and kind of they had a moment and a great little ball by 10 and behind a fullback and 1 0. So I think we've done a good job just you know, not kind of letting that offset what we were trying to do. We continued to play and got ourselves back in the game and we just back and forth again. We were never going to give up, they were never going to give up. So I think we expected that. Um. Just talk to, I don't know if, uh, if you had one of the assists and the goals, was it the winning goal or the second uh, goal? The second goal. Talk us just through that play, especially he's on the end line where you almost out. Um, it was a blur right now. I know it was a good link of a play from um, Fabio. Um, I think Nags was involved. Dallas. Um, I know Fabio was in line, and I know he, uh, he has a way of just getting the ball in at times, so I just made my run and then just saw it in the back of the net. What was the mindset of the players down when you fell down at one nothing? I don't know if you've been down much this year at all. Yeah, or... we, we've been in that situation before, um, but we're just resilient on the road. We uh, we stand by that, and um, we just kept playing. That was just our mentality was just to keep going, and uh, it worked out for us. Yeah, the Big East has three teams in the Elite Eight. Well, Creighton lost last night, yeah. but you know how was how important was you know playing a tough Big East schedule? You know, preparing, preparing you for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I think it was fantastic for the league to have those teams represented. I think there's a lot of good teams who weren't part of the NCAA tournament as well, uh, went out in earlier rounds. So I think it does, you know, the, the, the schedule, even out of conference, prepares you for these type of games. So I think, you know, throughout the course of the season, that's that's the position we put ourselves in, uh, playing those games. But the conference, fantastic. And I haven't seen the other scores yet, so we'll see what happens uh, with Georgetown as well. Um. As excited as you were to go up 3-1, were you a little aware of their little miracle here last week and they got two goals last 15 minutes that I talked about on the bench? And... Yeah, uh, yeah um, we saw you know, they were down 2-0 against Washington and made a great comeback, tied 2 twos and take many penalties. So we knew we had to be aware of that. And you know, even though they got the second goal, we knew that we just had to really you know, buckle down and defend for our lives for the last couple of minutes and just seal the game out. You talked about how you guys did that. Were able to buckle down? I mean, they had a flurry of chances there over those... Uh, you know, final 10 minutes. Um, you know, defensively as an organization, um, you know, stay compact because we knew going off the first goal that they would try and slip in, you know, balls between our outside backs and our center backs. Um, try to stay as compact as possible. And, you know, when it comes to balls floated in, you know, we, we dropped our, our, our target forward into the midfield and that gave us cover in front of our defense as well. So anything aerially, you know, we have guys, you know, 6'3", 6'4", 6'2", that also can match the height that they have as well. So it worked out for us in the end. As a keeper, how kind of nerve wracking does it kind of get when they're just throwing balls forward and anything can really happen? Go off a head, go over you. Yeah. I just always be prepared. You know, it's just uh, at this point, you know, there's no need to be nervous. You know, I'm doing what I love to do. I love playing soccer, and there's no need to nervous. Even you know, going down to one nothing, it was like you know we had plenty of time to take a deep breath. And let's just keep going. You know, we got two goals before half, and you know, to hold on for the second half. Was the wind much of a factor out there at all? I know you had it in the first half. I don't know if that helped the first two. I don't, I don't no. think so. Okay. No, I don't know what it was like on the field, but I don't think so. I think the weather was, you know, it was beautiful on the day, and it didn't really play a factor, I think. You know anything about North Carolina or UCLA? Uh, yeah, you know, you start doing homework. You know, you try not to get too far ahead of yourself, but you start kind of putting some pieces together. So two very good teams, So which, again, I think at this stage, that's, that's what you're going to see. So. Can you talk about that last goal you had, that, that strike from that curl, curl from distance? That Fabio Machado, mm -hmm. yeah, just a, a world-class goal. You know, he's very good. Uh, come inside on the dribble and you just seen the opportunity and struck it real well. I think all three goals from our end were, were top-class goals. You know, I'm not sure you know, they're a good goalkeeper, but I'm not sure if many keepers can stop them. So it was good. It was, I'm sure it was exciting for the fans and, you know, spectators watching. Any other questions?